Uh, next we have Philippa Lawson from CIPIC, which is uh, a group based at the University of Ottawa working on protecting the internet. Hello, uh, uh, it's great to see you all here today. Je, je m'appelle Philippa Lawson. I'm the director of the Canadian Internet Policy and Public Interest Clinic, CIPIC, uh, at the University of Ottawa. Um, just a few words about uh, CIPIC. We were started up in 2003 um, as a clinic to give students at the university a chance to work with public interest lawyers on real live issues involving the internet and other new technologies. The mission of CIPIC is to ensure balance in law and policy making and to promote the public interest in internet policy, especially when large commercial interests are threatening to undermine it, as we're now seeing in the battle over net neutrality. Il n'y a pas une question aussi importante à l'Internet que le principe de la neutralité de l'Internet. And by net neutrality, we mean ensuring that all content on the Internet is equally accessible, so that the smallest startup site can compete on a level playing field with large corporate websites. We mean not letting internet access providers charge big bucks for a fast lane so that well-financed websites get premium access to consumers while everyone else is relegated to a much slower lane that makes them less attractive to internet users. We mean not letting internet access providers take advantage of their gatekeeper powers to block or degrade access to sites they don't like. Uh, nous ne voulons pas permettre aux grands fournisseurs de l'Internet à uh, discriminer contre les fournisseurs concurrents, à uh, uh, discriminer contre leur trafic. We mean not letting the big Internet access providers um, discriminate against competing service providers by degrading their traffic. And we mean recognizing the conflicts of interest that plague this industry and forcing <laughs> companies that carry our traffic to keep their hands off it. The Internet has become what it is in large part because of the principle of neutrality on which it was designed. Until recently, companies that carried traffic on the Internet treated it in a neutral manner. They didn't discriminate against certain types of traffic, and they didn't try to levy extra charges for value-added service. In other words, for a fast lane, available only to themselves and those who can afford it. But this is what they are now threatening to do. And if we want to stop it, now is the time. A lot of you are here because you're tired of having your internet service throttled by the very company that promised you reliable, high-speed service. You may feel you've been sold a bill of goods and you're not getting the service you paid for. It's time that we as consumers held our service providers to account for the promises that they make to us. And it's time that the internet service providers who engage in these traffic shaping practices come clean and tell their customers what's going on. So to all the Canadian internet service providers who are traffic shaping, we say stop hiding the fact that you're discriminating against certain kinds of traffic and stop advertising speeds and capacities that you can't deliver or you're not delivering. Uh, so now that they've been called on the carpet, Rogers and Bell say that they have to throttle peer-to-peer -peer traffic because it uses up too much bandwidth. Well, we say, if you can't deliver it, then don't promise it. And if there's more demand than supply, then build more capacity. It's time. Comcast, in the States, Comcast was doing the same thing. They were recently called to account before the FCC in the United States for their traffic shaping practices. And before the FCC could issue a decision, they relented, saying that they'd find, they could and they would find other ways to manage their traffic. So if Comcast can manage its traffic in a neutral way, why can't Bell, Rogers, Shaw, and other ISPs do the same? <laughs> CRTC and for Parliament to take measures to protect the neutrality of the internet, to stop the big telecom companies from discriminating against traffic and content they don't like, and from turning what is now a level playing field into a two-tiered one. 
We have two important provisions in the Telecommunications Act right now. Section 27 and Section 36 um, prohibit telecom carriers from engaging in unjust discrimination and from controlling content that travels over the networks. Now, these are important provisions that go a long way towards, or they should be, protecting us, protecting net neutrality. But they are under fire. Big ISPs say we don't need the rule against unjust discrimination and that we should just let market forces decide what is right and wrong. But I ask, what kind of market forces are they that allow service providers to throttle their own customers after having promised them reliable high-speed service? If market forces were solving the problem, we wouldn't be here today. The reality is that we've allowed companies with a stake in both content and carriage to control how content is delivered over their networks. This is a recipe for problems and it's, so it's no surprise that they are looking for ways to favor their own content and traffic over that of their competitors. We need clear legislation that prohibits these kinds of actions. Let me ask you, do we really want to let fundamental decisions about how the internet develops be made entirely by commercial interests with huge profits at stake and with the ability to exercise gatekeeper powers? No! We need to protect the internet from being hijacked by vested interests. We need to ensure that value on the internet comes from the quality of the content and the applications online and not from control to act, control of access to them. So to the policymakers of Canada, we say the internet has already generated huge social and economic benefits and promises to generate more. But this promise will be seriously compromised if we don't take action now to protect the principle of neutrality on which the internet is based. Uh, so, merci Charlie Angus. Uh, we look forward to his private members bill. And we say save the internet. Préservez notre internet. <laughs>